Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Quack & Co, where every video is 10 minutes or less guaranteed, or double your money back. I am your handsome host, the Mingo, aka West. So happy to be with you here today, and today we are doing a preview for Arcana Prophetia. Uh, now, this is a very, very interesting, different style game. Uh, as you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous displayed here in front of me, but because this is Quack & Co and we love theme, there's a little bit of flavor text on the box, so, you know, we gotta do that part here. <clears throat> the fates are corrupted. The tenth god lies slain. One by one the pantheon falls into madness. As chaos overtakes the heavens, only the last sovereign remains to defy the apocalypse. The end of days are upon us! I mean, I think that's some pretty great flavor text. Not gonna lie. Really enjoyed doing that. Uh, what is Arcana Prophetia? It's a great question. So you're either going to, it's a two-player game, you're going to play either as the Fates or you're going to play as the Last Sovereign. And uh, if you are playing as the Fates, you are super powerful, but because of the corruption that has happened, you are trying to make all of your pantheon that you're playing out in front of you be on the corrupted side. And this absolutely gorgeous information that you see here in front of me, this artwork that is before me, is... It is beautiful. Now, to be fair, this is a uh, this is a paid preview, so I'm not going to give my personal opinions on the game. Other than to say, I think the artwork is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. They've done a fantastic job, really bringing forward that interest and in intricacy that you see with very unique artwork, which I really loved. Beyond that, I promise, no more opinions. As best I can. Here we go. So. What we are here, if you are the fates, you are a corrupted fate, and that means that you're trying to get all of these Pantheon cards to be on their red corrupted side. If you are the last sovereign, your power is a little bit less because you aren't quite as strong, so you're more powerful towards the end of the game, and you are trying to do your best to create uh, as many opportunities for the uh, uh, your cards to be the sanctified side. In other words, the uncorrupted, the beautiful, the light, uh, the power. Powerful. And the way that the game works is that you're going to be taking, uh, the Fates will be taking 10 cards, and they will be uh, deciding which one of those cards at a time they're going to be placing down. But before that, the Last Sovereign is going to use these tokens here at the bottom, and they're going to decide what card they think that Last Fate or the Fate person is going to be playing. So they're going to take those uh, those tokens, they're going to think to themselves, hmm, I think right now they're going to play this one, and they're going to place this down face down. The, uh, the fates are going to take their card, and they're going to say, I'm going to play a blank, whatever it is. If it happens to be a seven, congratulations, because we chose seven. So that means we matched, and that card will go down as the sanctified side. Now, if for some reason the uh, last sovereign didn't get that prediction correct, then it will go down on the corrupted side and the fates will grow a little bit stronger perhaps. And on each card there will be powers and abilities specific for the type uh, of player that you are, whether you're the uh, last sovereign or you are the fates. The fates will do the corrupted actions here, uh, which would be something like this card, where it says choose a corrupted card. Uh, if it were to come down as corrupted, you'd do this corrupted action here on the top. Choose a corrupted card that has one or more resonating tokens on it that triggers uh, the corrupted effect. Now, resonating tokens are also classified as bonded tokens, um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So then this particular one, would you would do this action. Now, if for some reason uh, it came down as a sanctified side, the interesting part is that the fate is still actually powerful enough to be able to do their action as well. So even if it comes down as a sanctified side, the corrupted uh, fate still get to play their action, and then the, uh, the last sovereign would get to play their action. So it's a very interesting... Um, uh, a very interesting rule set that comes out that way. It gives a very unique gameplay perspective uh, from it. Now we've, uh, Shira and I have played this game probably about five or six times at this point just to kind of get a, a big feeling for it. There is a kind of a tutorial at the beginning of uh, this game where they give you just a portion of the game so you can kind of get used to how the bidding or the uh, prediction mechanism works and the fate player gets used to putting their, their 
cards down, uh, and you kind of go from there. And then they add two more unique things on top of it, uh, which would be these the intro the introduction of these face cards for the fates, which would give them either celestial powers, cruel powers, uh, or capricious powers. So it would allow them to do one extra thing or have some other benefit that would happen towards the end of the game. Uh, one of the ones that we enjoyed playing with here uh, was the cruel cards where uh, when you played something to the high court here, it came down uh, as being sanctified, and if you played anything to the lower court, it would always be uh, a corrupted card, regardless of whether or not the last sovereign got it correctly. Because during play, as you're playing this down, the fates will choose where that card goes out on the table here, doing based around some movement mechanics. One of the other interesting things that happens is that if you bond two cards together, in other words, they equal a total of 10, you can't flip those cards over anymore. And then after the end of each round, you'll place another bond token on top of them if they haven't been moved. And at the end of three rounds, if they've got two bond tokens on them, they, be they become permanently bonded. You can't move that card and you can't flip that card. Now, why would that actually matter, you're asking? Well, the reason for that is because at the end of the game, whoever has the most of their type of card facing forward will actually win the game. Uh, so if, a, you, if there are more corrupted cards showing, the fates will win. If there are more sanctified cards showing, uh, the last sovereign will win. Now, what did I find out about this game that made it... Uh, for if it would be for you. What are some of those things that you might like uh, if you're looking for a type of game that is a, it is an interesting two-player platform or there's an opportunity for one player uh, to be very, very powerful at the beginning of the game and the other player to feel less powerful at the, end of the, at the beginning of the game, but then at the very end of the game, that weaker player at the very beginning is now incredibly powerful at the end uh, this game might be for you. That bidding mechanism where you're trying to decide what they're, what card they're going to be playing down, at the beginning of the game, I'm, I'm going to be honest, there's, it's really hard to guess that card. But as you're playing and you're trying to figure out if they're going to try to make those tens to make the bonds happen so you can't flip stuff over, it becomes a little bit more obvious as to what they're probably going to play. And of course, at the very end, you're down to only one or two uh, tokens here, so you can kind of make a more educated guess as to what you think they're likely to play. And that last two or three rounds of the game is, without saying anything that is going to give an opinion away, the last two or three rounds definitely adds a lot more excitement to the game because there is a really interesting things the interesting things that happen there towards the end of the game especially for uh the the last sovereign it really makes them feel a lot more powerful at the end of the game and the fates have felt super powerful throughout the entire game and now all of a sudden they feel less powerful but it's probably fair that they feel less powerful because they've just been killing it at the beginning of the game um, so that's the interesting part uh, for that particular option. Now, as far as does this game not work for you? Well, obviously, if this isn't a, if you don't want a two-player game, this game isn't going to be for you because it is definitely a two-player game. Uh, and it's not a game that you could really play solo, at least not that I could tell, uh, at, at least in any way that is a traditional solo experience. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a really good time playing this uh, in a two-player situation. Flipping the roles back and forth, getting to be the Sovereign, getting to be the Fates, uh, where you have the opportunity to place the different cards down, use the different movement mechanics. Um, getting to flip these cards over, sanctifying cards, corrupting cards, uh, having an opportunity to flip them back and forth, uh, creating cascading actions, especially towards the end, where it for the entire first part of the game you think you're absolutely going to get wiped there's no way you're going to win this game and then to come from behind and be able to sneak that victory out at the end using smart play and tactics uh, this game could definitely be for you if that's the type of thing that you're into other than that i will say that uh, arcana profeta profetia is an absolutely beautiful game I'm allowed to say that because I already said it once at the beginning. I'm not going to go back and refilm that. It's an absolutely beautiful game. I think that this uh, mat is very unique. The card art is gorgeous. Uh, and if this is something that tickles your fancy, please go check them out on Kickstarter. The link will be in the description down below. Thank you so much. And remember, less time watching means more time playing. Have a great day.